everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Linux Guy. Today I'm going to be talking about 3D printing again. Just a quick video today to talk about how to use the Cura Slicer. Now Cura is actually available on Windows and Mac as well, so if you're on those platforms this video might be helpful for you. But I'm just going to do a quick overview of how to use the software on Linux and make a G-code that we can use with our printer. So I'm going to open up Cura. And here we are in Cura, first time opening it. And we'll get started. Agree. It's talking about all of the releases and what's new in them. It talks about what Ultimaker collects. Now, Ultimaker is open source, so uh, be aware of that, but they do collect a few pieces of anonymous data through telemetry. You can disable this because it's open source software, but it's up to you, just to be aware of it. We can add networked printers. If you are a fan of the Raspberry Pi, you should look into a open source project called OctoPi, which will let you send jobs through a web browser in a web server run on your Raspberry Pi that will print things to your 3D printer. I don't have one of those set up, I actually just save the G code and use the micro SD card, and I store all the stuff on the micro SD card that I want to do. So we'll add a non-networked printer. You see there's a whole bunch of brands here. and I happen to have a Creality printer. I have the Ender 5. Now you can see there's a whole bunch of printers in here that you can choose from. I have mine here so we'll click Ender 5. It'll set the Creality Ender 5. And it will automatically have the dimensions of my printer because it's here. You can program this manually for a custom printer if you have one, which is really nice. I like that about it. It also assumes that it knows all the stuff about what I'm gonna do. It's all adjustable and it can all be changed later. I can even choose from different firmwares, which is really nice. Any of you who know anything about Marlin, you know that it can have some issues. And so some of these you can flash, some of them are default to other printers. They're pretty cool. And it basically just gives you the ultimate control over your setup here. All the defaults should work with your printer if you have a printer in the list. Otherwise, like I said, you'll have to set them all up manually. If you have an account or want one, you can make one with Ultimaker. I don't bother with that, I just use the software as it is, but might be something you might be interested in. Alright, here we are. We are in Cura now. The first thing I like to do in Cura is change it to Ultimaker Dark and reopen it because I like dark mode. And here we are back in Cura in dark mode. I just like this, it's easier on my eyes, but it's up to you. And I'm going to print this guitar back plate, so I'm gonna add this, and you can click and drag, or you can go to File and Open and find it in there. And basically this is something I designed to put on the back of one of my guitars that didn't have access to hardware inside, so I cut a big hole in it, and I wanted to cover the hole and make it look nice. So I printed this to make it look nice. And here we are, we're in here. So what can we do? Well, we can scale it. We can print multiple items, by the way, so if you drag more than one thing in here, you can click them and move them. I can move it around in 3D space. I can scale it here if I wanted to scale it. I can even click and drag these to just scale it by eyeball, or I can do it in millimeters or percentages, which is really nice. So, like, if you're doing lots of stuff for a project and you're going to scale the whole project up and you have 12 pieces to print, Cura lets you do percentage as well as size, so you don't have to do the math. You can just see, well, I scaled one of them to this size, so I'm going to just use that percentage on everything, and it'll work. I can rotate it in 3D space, which is also really useful. I can mirror the image. I can block supports in specific spaces, which I really don't need on this print, but you can see it's a really simple interface and it's easy to use. The basic settings. If you're new to printing, use these basic settings. You will probably find that you won't go wrong with that. So you can go ahead and print supports if you need them. You can print adhesion if you need it. Adhesion basically makes a plate around it, supports, or if you have spots that overhang more than 45 degrees. So if we were looking in 3D space this way and we had something hanging off over here in the air, you want supports so that that doesn't fall down when it's printing. And so it would basically just print this thing up here if you're new to 3D printing so that that won't fall when it gets time to print it. Now if you're not new to 3D printing, you'll be happy to know that Cura still is pretty powerful. It gives you control over virtually everything here with much more detail. So you can adjust the layer height, 
you can adjust the wall thickness. These are all the defaults. They're pretty good defaults, but you may have some reasons to make them thicker. You can adjust the infill. So where it was doing 10% increments, now I can do anything. I can even change the infill pattern. This right here is probably the most useful advanced thing because sometimes when you get PLA or some other material that you're printing with, even, even just PLA, it doesn't always want the same temperature. You can adjust the temperature here for your G-code so that it will work with the new filament. Speed. This is nice because you can take an hour off your really long prints by making just a minor tweak to this. A lot of times on my Ender 5, I'll do 90 millimeters per second and it'll cut a whole hour off of a 12 hour print. And this is just a nice little feature to have. You can Z hop with it. You can adjust fan speeds. You can generate support. The nice thing about here is, remember in our basic thing, we only could just do support or not support. Now we can actually adjust the angle in which we turn support on and we can also do stuff like just just do supports where it would be touching the build plate. Other places don't do supports. Now remember we've got this tool over here too which allows us to even do more detail than this does, but this actually will solve most of your problems with supports. Here's build plate adhesion. Again, we have more options than we did with the basic one. The default is skirt. Uh, a lot of times I'll do a brim. Rafts are sometimes necessary. Usually I will do a brim. It just basically make one on the outside. I'll go ahead and do a brim for this one. Dual extrusion. Now I don't have this option because I don't have a dual extruder on my printer. But for those of you who know what it is, you can use multiple colors. You can do some really neat stuff with dual extrusion. And Cura supports it if your printer does. Right, let's close that and slice. And you see this is a two hour print. Another thing I like about Cura is the preview. So not only can I drag over here to see the layers, now this has 12 layers, I can see them one at a time. As they build up, you see there they go. And there is our uh, infill. But not only can I do that, I can also play this to actually see how long it's going to take and what it's going to do and in what order. So it actually illustrates the G-code being printed for me. which can be really neat when you have some specific stuff you want to look at. I, and I can even scroll through here to make it go faster, basically just to see what it does. And I can do that for every layer. I can see the whole print this way. It can create it for me. One thing else I'd like to note, which is really just for you Ender users, not necessarily the Ender 5 either, but the Ender 3 I believe has this problem as well. Cura will open, look in this direction, with this little guy back here. Basically this is backwards. If I turn around this way, this is what it would be from the front of my printer. So if you want to watch your print and monitor it carefully, you may want to rotate your object accordingly to do that. Basically, if you use the instructions with the Ender 5 and build this, your control pad will be right over here. So it doesn't so much matter with this print, but some more detailed prints, you may want that. So finally, we'll go to save it to a file, and you'll see we've got our guitar backplate.gcode. And Kira adds the CE5, which is a Creality Ender 5, so that I know what the G code is for, so I don't necessarily have to do it again. Yeah, let's put it in my downloads or something. There we go. That G code is there. If I open it, there's my G code. So I could take that G code and put it on a flash drive, and then I could put it in my printer and print it. As always, thank you for watching the Linux Guy. Hope you like these videos. Make sure to follow us on library, lbry.tv. Send us a tip over there if you feel so inclined. If you'd like to see me have other cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum or some kind of wallet like that, let me know. Right now I'm just using library, but donations are always appreciated. It helps me keep these videos coming to you guys. If you are on YouTube, you will be getting your videos one day later than BitChute and Library, and I do post on BitChute and Library. The library is the one that I'm really trying to make my channel thrive on because of its blockchain. Uh, it's a good way for me to make money, and unlike YouTube, where I can't make any money until I have 2,000 subscribers, I'm already making money on Library, thanks to you guys. Well, it's all thanks to you. Make sure to follow me over there and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks, guys.